What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp animation with animator tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to animate a moving robot arm inside of animator. We'll talk about some of the different ways that you can organize your model so that this animation is easy and customizable. And we'll also talk about how to export this to a video. So this video was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, you'd like to vote on the extension that I cover every week, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this video is a part of a series I'm doing, and it's been a while since I've done a video on this, but where I talk through 10 different kinds of animations you can create inside of SketchUp. And if you want to download the example files for this series, you can do that by visiting the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. And so the first thing you want to do is let's bring down a model from the 3D warehouse. So in this case, we're going to download, we'll just go with this robotic arm by Harsh. So there's a number of different robotic arms in here um, that you can download and bring into SketchUp. But in particular, I want to explore, um, I want to explore animating something that has a number of different joints, just like this, right? And so the first thing we're going to do is we need to think about how we would animate this. And basically the way this would work is you basically have a number of different pivot points right? And those are basically points where things are going to move inside of your model. And so for example, with this arm, we would want to start by having this base set up so that it can rotate and everything within this arm is going to be tied to that. So what I want to do is I want to set this up so that the grouping um, is going to drive the movement of the model. And what that means is that means I'm going to set this up where the points that would drive the rest of the model are the largest levels of the groups, and then everything within that is going to be smaller and smaller, and we're basically going to nest those groups. So those animation movements are going to affect everything inside of the groups. And so to start off, I'm just going to take this whole thing, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to um, explode it so that it's just in here as its individual parts. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create my groups. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to start by creating a group right here with the base, right? And so the base is going to have this geometry as well as this piece right here inside of it, right? So I'm basically grouping these by things that are gonna move together. So I'm gonna start by making this a group, right? So now when I animate this, this is going to rotate. Well then, we need to start building our groups that go inside of this. So for example, the next part of this is going to be this arm that rotates forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this raw geometry, so I'm just triple clicking, and I'm just going to group it all. Then I'm going to drop these pieces into a group as well. And what I want to do is I want to go into my uh, outliner and I want to drag this into the other group, right? So this is going to be my top level group, right? So it may be a little bit easier if you organize this, but then I'm going to take the second group and I'm going to move this into my top level group. And I'm just going to rename this level one. And I'm just going to number these so I can kind of see the progression that's in here. And so then we want to do the same thing up here, right? So you're going to have these arms. So I'm going to triple click, make this a group, triple click, make this a group. And I just want all of this stuff that's in here to be in a group, right? That's going to rotate together. So all of those parts are gonna to rotate together. I'm just gonna make those a group. I'm gonna label that level two. I'm just gonna drag that inside of level one. And so you can see I'm kind of nesting these different parts in here. So I'm gonna triple click here, make this a group. We're just gonna take all of these pieces. Put them in a group. We're gonna call that level three, we'll drag that inside of level two. And this has gears in here. I'm not really planning on doing too much with the gears themselves right now. So um, I don't really wanna to animate to that level of detail, um, but you could. But I'm just gonna take these and put them in a group as well, right? And then these would be level four. Now 
we'll drag that inside of our level three group. And so what we've done is we've set this up where this nests, right? So you've got your level one, you've got your level two, three, and four in here. And what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to animate that with Animator. So I'm gonna do a file, save as, and I'm gonna save this file so that we can open Animator. And now let's open up Animator. So to do that, we're just gonna click on the clip editor right here. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a clip where these different joints move around. And so to do that, I wanna start um, assigning some unit movements. So I'm gonna click on the little box right here and I'm gonna add a new movement. And remember, as you mouse over things, you can see the grouping hierarchy inside of the model, which is really helpful for us. So for example, this first movement, we want this to pick up our top level group, right? So that's the group right here. And what we want to do is sometimes I find it helpful to go into x-ray mode to do things like this, but we basically want to rotate this based on the central point of this circle right here. And it may be helpful to hit the space key to temporarily exit to sketch up and just draw a line across this. So I'm just going to draw a line across here. That way I can find that central point. Then I'll click back to animator. So now I can find the midpoint. I may need to draw another line across here actually. Just to right here so we can see our midpoint. I'm going to go back to animator and I'll just set this on the central point right here. I actually had to fly through that wall in order to do that. But basically what we're doing is we're just setting this as a rotation, right? So I'm gonna type this in here. I'm gonna type in a value of 90 and hit the enter key. And so what that's done is that's added a rotational movement of our object that will now play in here. So you can see how this is rotating 90 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and close my outliner um, just cause that makes things run a little bit slow. But um, that's all we really need to do with this animation. So we're gonna click right here to save that sequence. And so that movement is now gonna show up in our, um, in our timeline over here. I'm gonna turn X-ray mode off. Well now, let's add another animation. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna add an animation that's associated with this arm rotating forward. So the way we're gonna do that is just add another movement. So new movement. And you just wanna mouse over this and you wanna click and you wanna find the level one group, right? We don't want the top level, we want level one. And so we're just gonna find the point right here the rotational point along which this uh, joint rotates, we're just gonna click. And for now, we'll just give this like a, thir or a negative 30 degree movement, right? So now we have two movements in here. So notice how when this arm moves, this is moving forward as well. And so if we were to exit this and go back and look at our sequence, you can see how both of these movements are inside of our animation. And the cool thing about this is you can adjust where this starts so you can drag it up and down um, so you can see where this movement starts. But we can just do that for all of the different joints that are in here. So we're just gonna click in here and we're gonna add another movement. And then I'm just gonna single click. I'm gonna find my level two group. My level two group is gonna be centered on this joint right here. So you could set this so that this arm extends by a certain number of degrees. And then we'll just do the same thing where we save our sequence. You can drag this so that these overlap a little bit like this. And so we're gonna do these, do that for all these pieces. But the cool thing about this is if you keep track of them, then you know that you can go back and adjust them as well. So notice how as this is rotating, this moves forward. Let's say that I wanted this to move at a different angle, right? All you have to do is just click on this or double click on it and you can adjust the angle. So let's say we wanted this to be like a 45 degrees or something like that. You can just go back and adjust that really quickly just like this and so then we can come in here and do the same thing with the last two parts so we would just come in here and find level three and rotate that like this and then the last one would have a slightly different rotation but not that big of a deal we would just find this last part so level four and then we would just set that to rotate based on this central point. And it might help to tap the left arrow key to lock to an axis in here, but you can set this rotation 
just like this. And you can drag these so that the movements overlap. And so you can also change the duration of some of these movements. So for example, let's say you wanted the 90 degree movement to be a little bit slower, right? So let's say you wanted that to run over the course of the whole animation. You could set that to be something like eight seconds long, right? And so if you set that to be eight seconds long, then that rotation is gonna happen as a part or overlapping with all of these other movements in here. So it's actually pretty easy to make changes um, when you're doing something like this. And so now that we have our animation created, let's go ahead and export this. And so one thing you're gonna need to make sure that you do is you're gonna need to make sure that you install the FFmpeg um, exporter. And so what that is, that's basically a plugin that lets you export true animations in SketchUp uh, from Animator instead of just exporting series of clips. So what we're gonna do there is you're just, um, I'll link to a video that shows you how to do that. Once you install that FFmpeg, then all you have to do is just go to the export button right here. So I'm gonna start by saving my model, and then I'm gonna click on this button right here for generate a video. And so you're gonna get this, um, you're gonna get this right here, which you can use in order to set this up. And so notice how, because I have FFmpeg installed, I have video options in here, so different kinds of video. So for right now, I'm just gonna select MP4. Um, I'm gonna leave the frame rate at 25, for right now, I'm gonna leave my speed factor at one, meaning this is going to be a nine and a half second video. And notice how these different frame rates, this will tell you how many frames it's going to export when you do this. And one thing you might wanna think about doing is you might wanna think about canceling this and just setting a camera in here. So for example, um, let's say that I wanted my view to be right here. Well, all you'd have to do is just insert a camera like this, and we're just gonna scroll out until we're to about this point, and then we're just gonna click on the button for capture current view camera. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna save a camera view right here. So now you know that your animation is gonna happen from this particular camera view. And we might wanna think about updating that so that we're kind of rotated around here. So we can just double click, set it to this camera view and click on save. So now we're gonna have this kind of front view of the arm moving around inside of our animation. So we're gonna save this again. And then we'll just click on this button right here to generate the video. And I'm gonna select MP4. I'm gonna leave this at 25. I'm gonna leave this at one. I'm gonna go ahead and set my dimensions to, we'll call it 1280 by 720. And it may not let you do that exactly because we have this lock aspect ratio in here. But so we can click on a test image to see how big this animation is going to be. So maybe we want to go ahead and do like a 1920 by 1080 or something closer to that. But then, and just note that the higher the resolution is, the longer this is going to take. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this arm movement. I'm gonna click on generate video. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna come through here and that's going to, that's gonna export all of the frames in here into individual images and then it's gonna use FFmpeg in order to stitch them together. And you could adjust this to make the arm do whatever you want inside of SketchUp. But we'll go ahead and let this work and then we'll take a look at what the final result is when it's done. All right, so now you can see how it gives us the options to either open the folder or just play the file that was created. So if I click on play, you can see how this is the animation file that was created. We could go back through and do a lot of different stuff with this, but once you get an idea of how the organization is set up, then creating the actual movements of the animation are really easy because you've got everything organized so it's kind of tied together. 
So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Are you creating animations like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.